We'll stay in the Eastern Conference. Some news here out of Columbus. This from Elliot Friedman as well. Jet Greaves and Columbus have settled. 2024-25, it's a two-way deal with an $800,000 uh, contract at the NHL level. 2025-26, that's one way at 825. We welcome in Aaron Portsline now, who covers the Blue Jackets for The Athletic. Aaron, good to see you as always. Uh, we just showed you the tweet, or we showed everybody the tweet, about Jet Greaves signing that two-year uh, extension. Yeah. Is he the future in net for Columbus going forward? I think he's definitely part of it, and that's what that contract says. That's the, really the news of that contract is that next year it's a one-way NHL deal. So he's going to be in the NHL you have to assume he's going to play some games this year. Uh, you would bet safely on that as well. Um, he, he's a great story. I mean, this is a kid that that missed the entire 2021 season because of COVID. He was with Barry. He signs an AHL-only contract with Columbus. Really was pegged to be an ECHL goalie at that point. Comes to Traverse City, the prospect tournament. Looks great. Really sort of brings himself into the culture of the club and develops some friendships there. And then the next February, he's got an AHL uh, contract and a two way NHL contract, I should say an entry level deal. Everything they've put before him, he has grabbed, uh, and he's met the challenge and then some, and just keeps getting better and better. And of course the pinnacle was this year, the AHL playoffs, 928 save percentage. He was a fantastic goaltender on a team that really had a nice run to the Eastern Conference Finals. I think they definitely, if they didn't see him before as an NHL guy, he has played him, himself into that role for sure now. All right, so they've got the goalie of the future. The question is, who's the guy behind the bench right now? We're in mid-July, and the Jackets yes. don't have a head coach. Are they just trying to make sure that you don't get to enjoy some downtime here in the offseason, or is that yeah, going to change they quickly? Yeah, maybe they're trying to be creative. Maybe they're going to go without a coach this year and just see what happens. Yeah, They've had a tough it. time behind the bench. Yeah, I mean, this will be their fourth coach in, gosh, I want to say like 16, 18 months, something like that. I mean, it, it's been pretty hectic back there. Larson, Brad Larson lasted two years, now an assistant in Calgary. Pascal Vincent lasted just the one year. Of course, last summer was the Mike Babcock hiring. He didn't make it even to training camp. Uh, so obviously this is a team that has to get it right this time and they are taking their time as Don Waddell has said they're the only team looking for a coach there's not competition for these guys that are out there Todd McClellan was tops on the list uh, apparently he's no longer tops on the list but I keep hearing that they could circle back on him Dean Evison Jay Woodcroft are the names you hear they're bringing two guys to town. I believe it's them this week. I suspect by the end of this week or early next, they're going to have a coach in place. All right. Well, Don Waddell has certainly been busy. Uh, he did yeah. sign Sean Monahan to that five-year deal. Is he hoping that maybe a reunion with Johnny Gaudreau kind of sparks both guys going forward? Yeah, absolutely. And Monahan really has had lots of injury issues in recent years, but not last year. He played 80 plus games. I think he was one of the few guys that played 83 games in the regular season, had 26 goals. We got back to it again, uh, uh, you know, where where you see Sean Monaghan being in the prime of his career. The term is, is lengthy, but that's what free agency is. They hope that in the short term, he brings Gaudreau along uh, back to where Johnny can be as a player point of game and beyond. I think the other real benefit of this is if you look down the middle of this team, it is so young down the spine. Adam Fantilli is coming into his second year. Cole Sillinger, believe it or not, is coming into his fourth season, but he's still a young guy. They just drafted Caden Lindstrom, number four overall. And it's not just the centers that Monaghan can help with, of course. it's They've got youth all over the lineup. He is, he is that guy that's expected to add to the veteran leadership at forward, just as Jack Johnson is on the back end with those young defensemen. They could have Juracek and Matejchuk here uh, in Columbus this year. That's not out of the question if both of those guys look like they're ready in camp. How about Patrick Laine? Let's talk him for a second. I know he's still in the uh, player assistance program right now, but I know you've reported that the club's still pursuing a potential trade for the forward. What's the latest on that situation? Yeah, well, it's an interesting situation. They could trade him out of the program. Uh, you can still trade a player who is in the program, so that – that is on the table. The issue is Patrick Laine played 18 games last year, and I think his, his enrollment in the program is also a reason 
that teams want to talk to him before they trade for him. It's not that they don't trust Don Waddell uh, to give them a fair assessment of where the player is, but Don Waddell doesn't know a fair assessment of where the player is because he hasn't been here. Uh, he was just hired earlier this summer. So these teams want to talk to Line A, and nobody can talk to Line A, including the Blue Jackets, until he's out of the program. So the Blue Jackets are... They have to be in a holding pattern. Other teams, according to Don Waddell, teams are still calling about him, so there is still interest in him. Uh, they hope they can make a move that's as close as possible to a hockey trade, but they're waiting for word from his agent or from Line A himself that he's out of the program and is now able to be uh, in communication with teams to, to move toward a trade. All right, interesting. Uh, we'll stay tuned on that. Look, there were a lot of great stories in hockey last year. Maybe the best involved you, and, and I know you know is it was it was a wild year for you. Diagnosed with stage five kidney failure, and then a um, a person within the Columbus Blue Jackets organization, Lindy Knoll, uh, came forward yeah. as a kidney donor, and um, it, it sounds like everything's going well for you. She was honored at the NHL awards. How special was that moment to watch to see oh. her get the recognition that she deserves? You know, it was great. I just saw Lindy yesterday. We were able to talk about it again. We haven't really stopped talking about it since it happened. Uh, the, the the award show, I mean, not the transplant. Um, I love that. I, I couldn't go to the award show because I I'm not I wasn't cleared to travel just yet. Uh, so you know, Lindy's. If, if, if you know Lindy, she doesn't really like the attention that this has brought uh, to her. And I loved it. Just sitting at home, she's up on stage all by herself with no choice uh, but to absorb and, and appreciate all of the love that she was getting that night that she so richly deserves. So it was an amazing night. And as I, as I reached out and told uh, several people with the league, uh, really appreciate them making a, a spot in the award show for, for us and hoping that it raised some awareness for people out there that may consider uh, donating an organ. Yeah, she doesn't like the attention, but she certainly deserves every bit of it. Uh, how's your health? How are you feeling right now? How's your summer going? Yeah, very well. Very well. Uh, everything's tracking in the right direction. Still some limitations, still some stuff to get through. Uh, nothing that's unexpected, and uh, we're on the right path. So doing much better. It's, it'll be, we're a couple weeks from three months out of surgery, so uh, all, all things uh, pointed in the right direction. Awesome. Glad to hear it. And uh, keep up the great work. Thank You're one you. of the best in the business. Uh, one of the good guys that we always root for. So seeing you do well is certainly uh, a green light for us. So, Aaron, enjoy what's left great of your summer. Day. Hopefully you get a coach there and you can take some much-needed downtime coming up in a couple of weeks.